On this episode, Steve Harvey sits down with marketing director for TAM Airlines, Manuela Amaro. Find out what Brazil's main international carrier has planned for the future as they compete to become one of the world's top airlines. It's all here on the PME Interview. Well, Manuela, very nice to meet you. And uh, I've been wanting to interview, interview you for quite a while now, so it's a pleasure to have you on the program. Let's start at the very beginning. You are now the marketing director at TAM. You're based in Sao Paulo, but how did you first get into the whole aviation business? I, I got into a um, trainee program. It was in 2001. And then uh, there was a program that uh, had a job rotation during an entire year through all areas inside the, the, the airline. And this program, uh, it has a, a divided combination between the commercial areas and the technical areas. So I stayed f during this year uh, in both areas, spending more time in the commercial areas since I, my, my, my background is, is uh, based on, on commercial uh, management. For those people that are not that familiar with TAM, tell us a little bit about the airline. How many, how many planes do you have? How many routes do you have? Are you the biggest or the smallest airline in Brazil? We are, we are pretty big now. We are uh, the biggest in Brazil, in South America. We are the biggest even in the southern hemisphere. So uh, we have our, about 140 40 planes, mm -hmm. and we are growing since like the past eight years. And we have a network around 800 flights a day. We fly to more than 17 international uh, destinations. And yeah, we are, we are now part of the Star Alliance. We are launching the alliance in, in May. How many people work with you? It's like maybe 70, 80 people. Yeah. That's a big department. Yeah, it's a very nice team, very good team. Manuela, what were, you, what were your first impressions when you first started working in in-flight entertainment for TAM? I was really not impressed because I was expecting to work with cutting-edge technology and I realized that I was going to work with tapes. And it was really frustrating for me to, to, to find out that the situation was that I was like dealing with a very conflict situation, working with Airbus or Fokkers, and, and I would have like tapes as a technology. It was really bad. So let's come right up to date now. You, you started working with tapes. Uh, are you still working with tapes or now do you have some of that no. new technology that you so crave? Uh, yeah, well, as soon as I, I found out that that was the reality, it was tough to change. We, we started to um, uh, develop a new process inside the, the department of getting to know what people were doing in that area around the globe. And then that was the way that I found out about WAA because before that I had no idea. And even Tom, I mean, uh, we had we have had some experience in the past, but we are not used to consult or to to participate uh, in in this um, organization. But we found out that we need to to benchmark what people were doing, what the vendors were doing, what they what could be a solution for our situation. And then we, we went for an RFP to change the entire hardware platform that Tom has at the time. It was in 2005. And then we decided to change it from the analog to the digital. So are you all digital now, or do you still have to handle tapes? I, I, I still have to handle, but because this is in a process of retrofitting, mm -hmm. and, and I have um, a small uh, percentage of the, the fleet with with the system yet, but is is already in the process of changing it for for digital. So, do you think there's a demand by passengers, your customers, for for connectivity? Yeah, no doubt. If we talk about the next generations, like the net generation and the next generation, which is the Y generation now and the future generation. I mean, people, they, they, this is part of their organism, you know? You can't cut the Blackberry or the iPhone from them. So once you get connectivity, do you think this will 
an impact on the amount of in-flight entertainment you offer people? Do you think people will start to be, if you like, making their own entertainment by surfing the web or connecting on Facebook or Twitter while they're on the plane? So you maybe have to spend less on movies, less on TV? No, I think it will really depend on the, the, the profile of the flight because um, long-haul flights, you will need to have content. You will need to, to allow uh, the passenger to have their own content. And like some kind of content you cannot have uh, through connectivity at all. Now, as well as having a very important job at TAM, that of marketing director, I happen to know that you're continuing your studies. Tell me what you're up to. Yeah, I decided to apply applying for this MBA program. Uh, it's an international MBA, executive MBA program. It's based in, in Germany. Uh, in my class, is there are like 20 students from more than 20, 12 countries. So it's a pretty interesting class because everybody has different backgrounds and, and ideas and, and it's, it's an opportunity of writing a thesis. And I'm doing this uh, about IFE. Oh, which, yeah. Is, yeah. which is which is really nice because I'm getting to know more about the industry because of this. Has anybody ever done that before, to your knowledge? No. So by the time you finished, you would have written basically a history of in-flight entertainment. With also the ingredient of the connectivity, because this is the main topic: how the connectivity is is changing the entire the entire platform of IFE and how this is going to be for, for the airlines to handle it because, you know, IFE is a huge thing in terms of investment, in terms of work. Connectivity is, is challenging everything that the, the airlines has done till now in this area. I don't know how I'm going to end up with this yet, but I have to find out because um, this is the thing that I decided to write about. In amongst your day-to-day -day work as marketing director of TAM, you're writing a thesis. Uh, I know that you're married and you have to spend time with your husband. And, and on top of all this, you've decided to become very much involved with the WAEA. You've given yourself an awful lot of challenges out there. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I will have a husband at the <laughs> end of this, but yeah, it's, it's a lot of work. Manuela Amara, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very Thank much you. indeed. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Stay tuned for our next episode of the PME Interview as we catch up with Alan Pellegrini, CEO of Talus. With state-of-the-art IFE systems in place, Alan discusses his plan for competing alongside industry giant Panasonic for a place among the top IFE hardware suppliers.